Hi everyone, welcome to Looking at Hollywood. Well, we have quite a guest today on our show. For those of you who have ever listened to radio or ever watched television, ever gone to Las Vegas or Atlantic City, you certainly have seen our guest. We have Jan Murray, a talented man in every field. So why don't we eavesdrop with Skippy and Jan now? Jan. Wasn't Clinton. that a sweet intro? Wasn't yeah. that nice? Clinton right now Thanks. is our huh? new president. Clinton? Yeah. yeah. You and you went to Clinton High School. I went to DeWitt Clinton High School, yeah. How do you feel about that? I mean, was you that... You mean I was supposed to re relate that? Yeah, <laughs> kind of. You went to Clinton High School in, yeah. was it in the Bronx or Brooklyn or where? No, I'm from the Bronx, yeah. You are from went the Bronx. Went to DeWitt Clinton, but I only went one year. Only, really? Yeah, and the real Clinton, right. the man who's now our president-elect, right. right. was a Rhodes Scholar, so he had a little more schooling than I did. But you went to the 10th grade, is that it? Yeah. You worked with yeah. dolls. Tell me about the bubble dolls. <laughs> the, the dolls? House, the dolls, yeah. How did you hear about that? I, tell me about that. Well, one of the first jobs I had, and I was only about uh, 15 years, 14, 15 years of age, and was uh, doing it right after the Depression. You know, the times were rough in right. those uh, years. And, uh, and, you know, those years, we really, uh, uh, to listen to all these political uh, rhetoric that's been going on and uh, the big debate, how much government should interfere, how much shouldn't they interfere, mm -hmm. how much government do we need in our lives, right. how little government do we need, you know. And the battle rages, and, and, I, and I remember in those years, my dad had a big business, and he went bankrupt. You know, it was the, the Depression, Depression years. Yeah. And uh, uh, overnight, <clears throat> the car that was his pride and joy, in those years, everybody worked six days a, a week. So Sundays, uh, on the day off, he'd force the whole family to, to ride in the car. You know, that was uh -huh. the big thing, you know. And uh, it was his pride and joy. It was a packard automobile in those years. That was a kind of luxurious big car. And, and overnight, he had a convert that packet into a taxi cab, and, uh, which he had to borrow. It took about $300, I remember, to convert it. And he had to borrow it from, uh, from his brother-in-law, my uncle. Right. And, and, and this very prideful man who just had a factory with over 100 employees uh -huh. was now driving a taxi in the streets uh -huh. of New York uh -huh. with this car that used to be his pride and joy. So, so in our, our thrusts were simple. You know, it's, it's right. difficult for youngsters today because they, we had no time to philosophize. We had no time, mm -hmm. you know, to to worry about all the great things that there there may be in life. Right. Uh, we had very simple thrust. It was called food and shelter. You know, that was <laughs> that our was, ambition. But, but that was life, though. That, that was, was life. And, but we devoted our life to it. Right. You know, we right. we didn't philosophize who's being mi mistreated, uh, who's talking uh, naughty to a girl. You know, right. who's of course. Doing, you know all the all the issues that are around today. Uh -huh. No, we had a simple thrust. You know, how to earn money so you could have food and pay the rent, because there were no government subsidies in those days. Government right. states they didn't help. And if you didn't pay the rent, the furniture was on the floor, right. was, was in the street, and a relative, you didn't have a relative to take in, uh -huh. you were really, really in trouble. And so, and today, one of the things that grieves me most in our society is when I see all these homeless people around, because I remember that used to be my biggest fear as a kid. You know, the homeless. Mm. Be homeless. To be homeless, and how did but we? But they get... didn't call them homeless. Those no, days. of course not. They we... call them bums. Bums, or homeless, homeless uh, well, whatever. Well, whatever. Whatever. But I'm just saying, when you see the vast amount of people that have no homes, that have no shelter, that right. have no regular food coming in, and all that, it, uh, to me, because that used to be my biggest fright, so it still is. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, get back to the doll factory. So yeah, I had to quit school and help out at that's home. That's what I mean. I had to quit school. I was I was about 14 and a half years old, 15. And one of our neighbors was a bookkeeper for the F and B doll factory, which was the biggest doll factory right. in the world. So that she got me a job. It was nine dollars a week. Mm -hmm. And my job was I I got there about 7:30 in the morning, mm -hmm. and they sat me and they gave me a paring knife. Right. You know. Uh -huh. And then they used to bring. Uh, all these, uh, they, they would take the dolls' heads out of these vats, right, you know? Right, And they would put them on these rollers and bring them. So it may be like 600 heads on a, on a, on a rack, right? Right, right. Now all I did was take it off, and wherever there was a blister or a bump or something, I would pare it down until it was even. Right. So I would take a head, boom, put it over here. Take a head, uh -huh. boom, boom, put it over here. Uh -huh. Take a head, boom, boom, put it over here. And the first day that I was there, after I had done maybe 2,000 heads, <laughs> I figured it must be lunch. 
You know, I guess it's lunch. And I looked up, it was like a quarter after nine. And I One said, hour. I don't think I'm going to do this for a living. Yeah, I, I, I better find something else to do, you know. But that was my experience. But your it. mother, <laughs> she used to take you to the vaudeville theaters, the wonderful yeah. theaters. Here's your mother sat you in the theater and said, Jan, watch, and you got, and you got interested into, that's how you got really interested. Interested, into. yeah, because for me, being in show business is, uh, was really a miracle. I, we never knew anyone in show business. We, yeah. we had, but, look, but nothing she, could have been more foreign to me. Uh -huh. uh, they never gave me uh, dancing lessons, right. singing lessons, yeah. piano, but the violin. But your mother loved it, though. No, my mother, rest her soul, she passed away, at a, she was a very young woman, and, uh -huh. and, uh, she uh, she passed away needlessly because today she's still been alive. It was, it was something they just didn't diagnose, and yes. she just was in pain and suffered the last 10 years of her life. And uh, so to her, the two most important types of people in the world were doctors and performers, entertainers, because they were uh -huh. like the only ones who gave her a little relief from her pain. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The doctors were by medication and the performers, those, they, they would those... bring her in a different world. Right. Yeah. So she used to take me to the local vaudeville theater. They changed the shows twice a week. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, there'd be five acts of vaudeville, and there would be singers and dancers and magicians and uh -huh. acrobats and comedians uh -huh. and, and lovely girls with beautiful gowns singing, right. and, you know, and it, it would give her a different life, you know, at that hour was uh -huh. the most important. And she used to take me, and sometimes she'd be too sick to go, so I would go. And then I'd come back and I would describe the whole show to her. I would tell <laughs> I her, it. I would try to describe what, what the acrobats did, right. the tricks, you know, because uh -huh. yeah. I'm not an acrobat, but I would, I would uh, describe it to yes. her. And uh, I would tell her the type of songs that were sung. And, the, and when I got to the comic, when I got to the comedian, uh -huh. you know, as a kid, your mind is not cluttered. Right. So I used to stay there and see two shows, and I already had his act, you know? <laughs> got it all. Yeah. You kids. and Henny That's, Youngman. <laughs> oh, and Henny Young. <laughs> Henny Go still got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but, you know, some kids, their minds are clear, like my grandchildren now. They right. can see me work once or twice. They know the whole thing, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, and I'd come back and I would do everything for my mother. Uh -huh. And when I got to the comedians, I would do the comics all that's great. But that's but I was never in a school play. I was never nothing. But Jan, <clears throat> come on, the Catskills, right from there. You oh, were booked I wasn't right the from Catskills. there, but I went to the Catskills. Tell I was me. I was about fifteen, sixteen 15 years of age. Years of age yeah. up the Catskills. Wow. Yeah, where did you work? What first place in Catskills? First place I worked was a place called the Cherry Hill House Cherry in Hill. Allenville. Of course. I got three dollars a week, room and brought, room and board. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm bum. <laughs> really? And Go. you do the but I'm bum. She certainly does. Jam. But anyway, uh, yeah, but and, and even that was, you know, I got into this whole thing quite accidental. Uh, Skippy, uh, you, I don't know, you might get a kick out An of this. Accidental. That's. But I tell you why. Yeah, because. As I said, we never knew anyone in the business. Right. We, we, I certainly didn't prepare myself for the business. Uh, even though I had seen all these shows in my life, right. and I was a funny kid in the house and in my neighborhood, they knew I was never funny in school because I was scared I'd be in a section book. Right. Uh, here's so many comedians say, yeah, I was always the class clown. I was never the class clown. Right. I was always right. scared to death in school. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I guess I had an innate yes. comedy, innate humor. And, and it began to express itself in a peculiar way because I went to a uh, party uh -huh. and I was about 15 and I went with three friends and it was a sweet 16 party. Right. And they had a group of guys there at the party right. that were forming a social club. In those years, you know, uh -huh. boys couldn't afford to take out girls. And all. So in the Bronx, you know, in these two-story houses, they used to have these cellar social, clubs. Social, social clubs, clubs, of course. And they used to form these clubs. Uh -huh. So they formed this club called the Cavaliers. And these guys, there must have been about 25 of them, were at this Sweet 16 party. Right. And I got there, and I got it. Immediately, I was always tall for my age, you know, uh -huh. so I looked like an 18-year-old guy. Right. And immediately got a crush on this, uh, on the girl who, you know, who, who was the, the party was for. Right. But she was the hostess, so I couldn't pin her down to talk to her. And finally, about 9, 10 o'clock at night, I got to talk to her, and she was miserable. She felt the party was dull, a uh -huh. dud, uh -huh. and all that. So I said to her, now, here was a chance for her to recognize me, I mean, to notice me. Right. I said to her, would you like a show? Ah. She says, a show? <laughs> now, I never entertained anywhere. Never right, in, right, I was right. never in a school play, nothing. Yeah, I understand. I said, would you like to, to, you know, for her, 
She says, well, yes. She says, what? I says, I can entertain. I says, I'll tell you what. Give me about a half hour. So I took my two friends. Uh -huh. I'll never forget this. Took them in the bathroom. Uh -huh. And I started rehearsing them in the different skits and things that I'd seen in vaudeville, vaudeville through the years. Of course, of course. But, you know, by That's then great. I'd been gone to vaudeville for eight, nine years. Uh -huh. So I had all this material in my head. Right. So, in fact, I was the straight man. I gave one of the other guys the right, funny lines because right, right. I didn't know the difference, you know. Right. But uh -huh. anyway, I just wanted her to notice me. Yes, yes. But I was like the MC. Uh -huh. So I said, we're ready with the show. And I went uh -huh. out. I'll never forget the first gag. Skip, this is great. My friend's name was Joe Boris. Uh -huh. And uh, he'd never been in the business. Now, I want to tell you something. This has to be over 50 years ago. Right. And I just... Uh, Three weeks ago, appeared in uh, in uh, Atlantic City right. at Harris, right. and I get a note backstage. Joe Boris, uh, I haven't seen him in maybe fifty, 50 years. years. I says, Joe Boris, I got so excited, <laughs> send him back. You know, and we course. both he was thrilled. We're both yeah, thrilled yeah, that we're yeah, alive. Right. You know, we're looking, <laughs> my God, we're walking, we're talking. What the hell is this? <laughs> We started reminiscing uh, about this night. Right, right. Where I really started. He says, you know, he says, all through the years, Jan, as you were getting more popular and more famous, right. I'd always tell my friends, because he was a mechanic, you know, yeah. he says, yeah. you know, he was my buddy, and we, Great. the first time he ever appeared in public, I was his yeah. partner, and they, yeah. they thought uh, he's lying, you know, uh, yeah, uh, well. uh, And here's right. the joke. Yeah. Now, here's the yeah, first joke, it. which I'll never forget. The gag was, and I don't forget, I copied this, I right. stole it right. from a right. billion. Yeah, of course. So he, he played <clears throat> he played the stooge in a box. Right. Right? You know the way the MC right, comes right, out. Right, he, right. And he bothers him. I came on and I says, Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're here for so and so's birthday. We want to wish you a happy birthday and we have a little show prepared for you. Very nice show on this guy. Hey, what's going on here? Whatever. And he starts right. the heckle. Right. And the first joke. Now in the beginning, they don't know that this guy's right. What, that's an act that he's heckling, you know, and the other <laughs> people want to hit him. And he, and he, you don't know anything. I said, I don't know anything. <laughs> he says, yeah. He says, where was Moses? He says, if you're so smart, he says, where was Moses when the lights went out? Uh-huh. So I said, in the dark. You know, it was an old Fort Villain joke. Of course, you know? of course. I said, in the dark. Yeah, that, that was the yeah. opening joke. Uh-huh. What do you think he says? He says, you think you're so smart? Let me ask you a question. God, ask me anything. Uh -huh. He says, where was Moses in the dark? <laughs> Uh, he didn't. He's supposed to say, where was right. Moses? The lights went out. Right, so I right. say in the dark, right? Yeah, right. This yachts, this is his yeah. He says, where was Moses in the dark? I says, when the lights went out. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Jan. That's the first joke Jan. ever said in public. Jan. Burlesque. You did burlesque. I did burlesque, too. Oh, sure. When I said. I you burlesque. Bur burlesque, 15, 16, Jan. Well, no, I was a little you older. Little older than burlesque. Really? Sure, sure. But you weren't very old. You were like 16, No, 17. I was a little old. I was about 19. You were? Okay, 19. That's not too old. Okay. Oh, but I was the... I think maybe I was the youngest top banana in the history of Berlin. That's right. And but, Leon and Eddie's. Tell me about Leon and Yeah, Eddie's. Leon and Eddie's. Well, by the time I got to Leon and Eddie's, well, Leon and Eddie's was a great, great oh, club room. in those years. Wonderful. They used to do four shows a night, Skippy. Huh? I know. I know the room. Oh, and, well. and Eddie Davis, yes. one of the partners, was the entertainer, was the performer. Right. And Sunday nights, they used to have guest night. Where right. All the Amateurs, stars in New stars, York it, would come yeah. on, and you know, right. and, and it was great. And so, of course, that was a, one of the most popular clubs in town. in town. Every so often, he would take a vacation, right. and they would give a young comedian a yeah, chance. A uh, Jackie Gleason, they were hired once for two weeks. That's how he got did his Did you host chair. that show? You were an MC of that show for a long time, weren't you? Well, Leon Eddie's? Yeah. No, no, no. You did your... But I worked it once. What? He, he went for surgery. Right. And he, he, uh, he had problems with his ear, I remember. He went for surgery, and right. they booked me for a week. Leon Emkin, his partner, booked me for one week uh -huh. to go in. And I stayed, I think, six weeks. Right, right. Because I stayed there six weeks, and uh, that's, well, that was that's really the first. Uh, but I'll tell you, the big break I got Lama, out of there. Lamanique. How about the big that? break I got out of there was uh, Sidney Piermont, who booked Low State, which was the mecca of, in New York of all, right. who saw That's me. Right. That's right. Saw me in Leon and Eddie's, and he gave me my first shot on Broadway. 24 he, years old. He booked he me was at a name, State. He was a name comedian at 24. Hmm. 24, yeah. you were the youngest. Even younger, yeah. Maybe, you even yeah, younger? Maybe a little. You yeah, worked the I, top clubs. Copacabana? <laughs> yeah, Copa, La Martinique. How yeah. about Shea Perrine, Shea Chicago? Shea Chicago, yep. These are the top yeah. rooms in the country. Yeah, they were 24 the, years they were old as yep. a comic. Yep. Jan, you didn't have an act. Tell me, well, how oh, did Oh, I had it by the time by I the got time, to the I hope so. I mean, but you, come on. I mean, but, but you, you did it. just come out and no, look how sweet I am. Right. No, but I meant Jan. This is 24 years old. 
God. Yeah, well, you know, I was one of the few guys some that, of the was stars younger, that, you... that was younger than his material. You were, <laughs> did you ever work with Sophie Tucker and those people? Sure. That's right. Sure. Sophie Tucker. I worked with Sophie, yeah. Tell she me was about really working something. with... Was she? Sophie Tucker was the... Uh, she was like the ultimate showwoman of that era. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And when she was on that stage, when she was uh, working, balls. she voted yeah. no interference, nothing, you know... And her stardom was, oh, God, <laughs> so different from today, right, right. And, you know, from uh, even my, my era, yeah, you know, yeah. because she came from two eras before me. Don't forget, when I worked with Sophie, she was, she was elderly. She, she was, I, she I was almost as old as I am yeah. now. Yeah. So uh, she's an old woman. You're, a, you're just a young <laughs> But um, Tell me about Milton Burrow. Had a lot to do... With Jan Milton Murray. Burrow. Come on, I'll come tell on. You, I'll tell you something about Milton I know Burrow. about Skip Milton Burrow. I'll tell you, you about Milton. He was... Uh, Milton Burrow was beyond being a great, great comedian. He was... I, I'm saying was like he still isn't. But, I'm, but right. we're talking of that era and how he affected young comedians. Right, right. That's why I'm using past tense. Thank yeah. God he's still with us. Yeah. Uh, all the things I'm saying you could say about him yeah. presently, yes. too. He's, you know... But I'm saying from a viewpoint of a young comedian coming up, Milton was a star. He was a big, big star. There's a guy that was a major star when he was 17, 17. or 18. He already, oh, yes. because he started when he was four years four old. Zero. yeah. And he probably started in his mother's puppet, you know, he started, yelling he jokes. He started in movies and all that. Right. But, but Milton was beyond being funny. He was exciting. And to this day, he's maybe the only exciting comedian I've ever seen. When I say exciting... This guy would fly out on the stage with such energy, and he would always MC a show. You know, right, he wasn't, right. a, he wasn't a, a pure stand-up comedian. That's what you like to do, though. Huh? You're actually an MC, too. That's basically... Well, but, uh, basically I, but I haven't done it in 40 years. Jan. There's been no room for that type of thing in the last 40 years. that is basically years. your love, though. Yeah, no, no. I love what I'm doing okay, for stand-up, okay, you know. Okay. But, but Milton wasn't a pure stand-up, you see, because he always worked with acts. But his energy, his flying out, the right. whistling, the tumbling, the thing. Yeah. And he was not only hysterically funny, working with the acrobats, with the harmonica player swallowing the harmonica, he did <laughs> shtick, he did bits, what this guy carried on, you know. Yeah. And, but to see him, you know, you, you were like elevated. You were, right. you know, gee, you were charged. You know? And uh, he had the most amazing vitality. And boy, I tell you, when a young comedian w walked out of the theater, he was better after seeing Milton because uh -huh. he was charged up. Mm. Uh -huh. He had such a love for the stage and the audience, you know, so it, it, right, right. it transmitted itself to you. Uh -huh. And uh, there was an excitement about this guy's comedy that, uh -huh. you know, that was very different. And he was, he was wonderful. Jan, you met your wife? Where? You, you got married. Well, you met her. A Tony, you. Yeah. She was a Copa girl. Tony was a Copa girl. A dancer. Girl. Oh, wow. yeah. She was a Copa dancer. A legendary Annie. Copa girl. Yeah, tell me about it. A real legendary. Yes. Yeah, you was were like, the Copa at the time when you uh, met her. <laughs> well, yeah, I met her. I was just about being. I was married, and I was just about being right. separated from from my ex-wife. Our marriage hadn't worked out. We right. were two young kids, and yeah. all. And uh, the first time I didn't, I I saw her. Was uh, at the Copa. I saw her at a show. And we went, I went to see uh, two, two little girl singers who I used to work with when they were children. Barry sisters? And the Barry sisters. I knew they you were, were going to say that. They used to be that. the Bagelman sisters. The Bagelman sisters. The, the Barry. Barry. I worked with them many. I loved them. Yeah, I loved them. I, I loved them. them. I loved Good, them. they changed yeah. their name. They used to work with them. Yeah. I'm in the kids, mountains. The Bagelman sisters. Yeah. <laughs> I worked in the mountains with them, too. Uh, did you? Yeah, of course. They were great. So they got, all of a sudden, these little Bagelman sisters had their noses job done and and they're gorgeous, you know, the beautiful kids and... And uh, they opened a copa. Right. Here, the little girls used to sing Jewish songs in the of mountains. Of course, so, I know. Yes. So I went to see it. Anyway, and yeah. that's the first time. Now, uh -huh. the Copa Cabana in those years, oh. they had the most gorgeous, luscious girls in the whole world. Monty yes. Prosa. He had a taste. He knew how to pick. So one girl was more gorgeous than the other. Those girls used to do as much business as the stars that's did. That's right. <laughs> that, now, they used to come to see oh, the yeah. girls. They really oh. came to see the girls. Oh, yes, they really did. And... Uh, and, of course, to me, one of them was very outstanding. I was getting ready to go overseas. I was appearing at the Paramount Theater. Right. And I was getting ready to go overseas to entertain. As I was a young man, I was, I had a, I was a pre Pearl Harbor father. Oh, so I was 3A, and I just couldn't hang out. And I, I felt I had to do something. So, entertain the troops. So I went over to entertain God the troops. Bless you. So this was my last time in, in New York. Right. And, uh, and that's when I saw her, you know? Right. And... Uh, I saw, of course, saw all the girls, and the shows were over, the, uh, the uh, Barry sisters came right. to the table, and right. I said, oh, right. great, and, 
and they talk about the girls. I said, yeah, you're so gorgeous. You could be a copa girl. You know, I was uh -huh. kidding him now with the nose job, and I was, <laughs> I was sitting with the plastic surgeon. <laughs> so he said, uh, lovely. yeah. He kept saying he was a southern boy, Dr. Shear. Incidentally, all these uh -huh. years later, he's still one of my closest friends in right. the world. And his southern boy from Texas, you know, he's still, and he says, he keeps saying, I won't do your nose job. Uh -huh. I says, well, I said, well, you want to put it back in the middle where it belongs or you want to leave it where it is, you know? Jam. And eventually he did yeah, it. He right, did. Oh, yeah, he ate Bob Money. But did. anyway, so I'm sitting there, and I said, yeah, I says, but one of those girls, I says, was outstanding. Of all the outstanding, uh -huh. she says, I bet you know who you're talking about. She says, I bet I know who you're talking about. I says, she says, Kelly, Tony Kelly. Tony Kelly. So I says, well, I don't know who Tony uh -huh. Kelly is, but uh -huh. there's one of the girls, a red, uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, would you like to meet? I says, yeah, I'd like. So they brought her out. We said hello, and she was a very, very uh, uh -huh. bright, yes. nice, fun girl. And that was it. I invited her to come to the theater to see the show. She said yeah. no. They told her backstage <laughs> I was married, you know. Oh, okay. So she said, thank you. I said, well, I'm going overseas. <laughs> but I'm playing not like a soldier that's going over to get hurt. <laughs> I went, my act, I could have, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going overseas. And boy, and that didn't help. Yeah. So I never saw her again. After the war, oh. it was all over, and I came back, and this and that, and, and we broke up, our lives broke up, and this and that, and the other thing. And I started working again, and I, and I just couldn't get to it, because I, <clears throat> and I went back, and I, I went back to the USO, and I volunteered to entertain in the hospitals. Uh, that was the toughest thing maybe I ever did in my life, uh -huh. because these boys, I know. and you know, the, the guys, they were great audiences. You see these boys with the arms and legs up, know, the crazy. basket boys, they would scream. They were such yeah. great. great. But where I, where I, I could never get out of my mind were the poor guys who were in mental hospitals. And, yeah. and I used to beg them, don't send me there. Because, yes. And they said, Jan, if you can get through, get one laugh, you're doing something. So I'd stand there and try to be funny. And, you know, these poor boys are just mm -hmm. sitting there. And that, to me, was, was more difficult than anything I've ever done. But anyway, when I finished that and the whole war was over and all that, that's... Uh -huh. I felt I was ready to get back into to the working business, and I started again. And I must say, I was lucky, and within no time, I get booked at the La Martinique, which was La Martinique. La Martinique, which was right. just a step, right? Maybe a step below the Copa. Of the, course, I said the Copa and the Martinique were the two top did, uh, nightclubs did in Josephine America. Did Josephine Baker, or, or I think she worked it? Yes. Josephine Baker. Yeah, the biggest people yes. in the world worked it. I think uh, Eartha Kitt, Josephine Eartha Baker. Eartha Kitt, Danny all, Kaye, absolutely. Danny Thomas. Tell me, tell so. me. Okay, so but you anyway, when I came back there to yeah. work, Tony was a showgirl there. She was a there. showgirl there. <laughs> ah, but you. Then we started to say hello. Okay, and you got married. We're married 43 years. 43, My and how many God. kids? We just got married 43 years. <laughs> 43, congratulations. Yeah. Now, October I know. 7th was our anniversary. I, I, Congratulations. How many kids do you have? Tony and I have three, and I have my beautiful son for my ex, you know, for my first any marriage. Business, so any I have business? Four. Any other in the business? Yeah, the any, two boys. Uh, yeah, the two boys? Yeah, are. yeah. Warren is a writer, and, and uh, Howard is a young director. What's the biggest lesson you have learned in your life, Jan Murray? The biggest the lesson. The biggest lesson learned. I've learned. Yeah. Have you learned a lesson? I'm sure. Well, I'll tell you've you. You've been 50 years yeah. in show business. 50 <laughs> yeah. years. A little over, yeah. You know, I'm 45 years in show business. But you and I have a lot in common, though, but one thing, <coughs> Wynn Hanman, the mountains. Oh, my heavens. Did Wynn you study Hanman. with Wynn? I certainly did. What a beautiful guy. I used to work the mountains, and I used to go back and forth with Wynn. And you know, he... I studied acting with Wynn, yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, you know, he was, I, I just loved, I met him socially. And at the time I met him, I already, my career had gone in a different phase. I accidentally wound up. Uh, emceeing on television. Uh, you uh, had uh, shows. Game shows. Game shows. Now, what the hell's a guy like me, a stand up comedian, doing with game shows? I was the only stand up comic doing this. Ever. First. Oh. And, uh, That's yeah, right. and I, you know, first. and it was very difficult. Very difficult to What was marry. the very first uh, sh a game show you did? The very first. It wasn't Treasure Hunt. The Treasure Hunt. Oh, no, came no, later. no. That's the first. This, no. Th you've done I, so I many. I think the first. Successful one was the thing that brought me me to their attention. The network's attention was a show called Songs for Sale. Songs for Sale. Songs that was back sale. in 1950. Right. Oh, right. wow. And you know who my two singers were? They got a hundred and a quarter apiece. <laughs> they used to sing the new songwriter right, right, songs. Right, right, Songs for Sale. They got a hundred. The girl was Rosie Clooney. <gasps> Rose Clooney. And the boy was Tony Bennett. 
Oh my God! <laughs> Pretty good. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Pretty good. So anyway, that that was the cast. Yeah. And you were at That's the Wellington. Incredible. Your office was at the Wellington Eventually. Hotel. Yeah. The hotel yeah. Wellington. Eventually. Yeah. I, I had there. the whole seventh floor there. You did. Yes. Yeah. I used to see you around because there. Because then I started packaging and producing my own right. shows. You know. So yeah. You enjoy doing that. But I met. But, yeah, but I'm, Go ahead. I met Win at a party. Right. Yeah. So here I am. You know. Now I'm an executive. I'm. Uh, I'm packaging, I'm producing, I'm on the network, I got my show, you know, I think at that time I had already treasure right, hunt, right. dollar a second, and I meet Wynn, and I said, <laughs> and uh, he says, what a lovely boy, what a terrific guy, he and his wife, I fell in right. love with them, and I, he says he teaches acting, I said, how can you teach acting, because uh -huh. me, everything for me was organic, it just, came from my gut, you know? Of course. I says, how do you learn acting? What, are you kidding? You, uh -huh. You've taken money under false pretense. He says, why don't you come? <laughs> so I went and I observed for a while and I found it so fascinating that I joined this class. At, at Skip, maybe the funniest thing in my life, right. maybe the funniest thing, no, we what lived in funniest? Rye. Yeah. We lived in Rye. I had my offices and everything in Manhattan. Right. I'm on every day doing a show. That's right. Right. So I'm a pretty busy guy. I used to answer my mail. Uh, my chauffeur was driving me, and I'd, I'd dictate into the thing. You know, I'd, I'd get 100 letters going, coming, 100 letters dictated back. So I had right. that type of life. And here I have three little kids. So I, I wanted to spend time with them. I have to come back at time every night. Right. So that they, you know, so I don't have to tell you, I was really on a merry go Of course. And I used to leave meetings, big meetings, with heads of networks to go to this little loft. <laughs> <laughs> and do a scene from the from <laughs> view from the bridge. That's right, that's right. I they love never it. know. Because, I, love it. I, said, know, I have to go. Didn't, because <laughs> you know why? Every comedian has that inside depth yeah. about him to be a good so, dramatic as, as a actor. Of Am fact, I right? Yeah. The first time, Skip, you get a kick out of this. The first time I, I went there at the class, because yeah. I said, How do you teach? Rip acting? Taylor we used to go there. Yeah, Dick heard, Roman. But I, I yeah, but I but wasn't these, in there. No, you yeah, anyway. But I you know, to me I said, How do you teach acting? So I'm watching this. And what they were doing was an improvisation. Right, right. Right? Yeah, of course. So now, and they're kind of mumbling and walking around <laughs> and talking. And I'm saying, what the hell is this? You know, as a performer. Uh -huh. right? Oh, I said, gee, they're awful to myself. And then when they were through, we didn't say, very good. You had a uh -huh. good moment here. You uh -huh. had a good moment. And I'm saying, what is he kidding? This guy? <laughs> so finally, they, when I tried to get that, me improvise. Uh -huh. Well, I'm up there. I'm, I'm writing a play while I'm talking. I'm never listening to the girl uh -huh. I'm working uh -huh. with. And I'm saying, you idiot, I'm leading you here. Go here, we'll have a dramatic finish, you know, in my head. And I'm, oh, I'm And I thought I was terrific. Uh -huh. And I'm all over the stage, and I'm yelling, and my uh -huh. arms are wet. So when I was through, uh -huh. he said to me, he said, Jan, he said, I have to tell you, you never listened. You know, acting is listening. You never heard what she had to say. And this, and he started to criticize me uh -huh. in front of these kids. Of course, of course. Now I'm standing there with like a two thousand dollar cashmere suit, <laughs> yeah. you know, with nine hundred dollar shoes. You know, my briefcase cost more than the whole vault right, he was right, in. Of course. And this guy is telling Just, me I'm nothing. You know, yeah, I'm no good. Right. He's, he's critic. He has the nerve to critic. Yeah. And you know, when you're a boss, when you're the packager, and nobody tells you the no. truth. They never no. tell you you're lousy. Everybody, yeah. oh, yeah. Jack, yeah. today he was. You know, it's yeah. always wonderful. Always. So here he is tearing me down in front of these young kids. I, I was so embarrassed. I and I didn't know how to, and I looked at him. Boy, I want to kill myself. Uh -huh. 